shring ka e i la ring asa ka la ring sa ka la ring sa hoin kling ring shring namaste so it's so funny every episode of this series gets fewer and fewer views <laughs> This uh, Mahasodashi Mantra, this is really for the connoisseurs, you know. This is very, very high practice in Bhakti, Vishishtadvaita Vada. So uh, those who are really sincere, though, are really appreciating it, and that's very nice. That makes me real happy. So the second line of Mahasodashi Mantra Aum ring shring. Okay. Now, the Aum used in the beginning of the first line represents Shiva, okay, or Brahman, the Supreme Self. But the Aum in the beginning of the second line represents the Jiva, the Atma, the aspirant, the disciple. In other words, us. So, in actual practice, once we have the initiation, we replace the second Aum at the beginning of the second line with our Atma Bija. Now, Atma Bija is a, a concept that we've explained a little bit in some previous videos, but I guess I should uh, explain more. The Atma Bija is a Bija usually one of the main bijas that we've already covered, which is given at the time of initiation into the mantra. So first, one should get initiation into Siddhi Mantra. And Siddhi Mantra includes one's Atma Bija, which is usually like Ing, Shring, Hring, Aing, Kling, one of those bijas. And this is calculated according to astrology. And there's like many, many combinations of mantras or bijas in the Siddhi Mantra. So don't chant somebody else's mantra. <laughs> Get your initiation. And in the video on Siddhi Mantra, I gave the email address in the video description that you can email to get this initiation. So you should do that first. Chant the Siddhi Mantra for some time until you're sure that it's working nicely, you're getting bliss and relief from suffering and all that good stuff. And only then apply for initiation into Mahasodashi Mantra. So when we chant the uh, mantra before initiation, we replace the Atma Bija with another Aum. But then after the initiation, we use our Atma Bija there. So, what is the meaning? Oh, uh, and Atma Bija is described in detail in an article, and I'll post the URL, the link to the article in the video description. So, the three Bijas used in the second line, Atma, uh, the Atma Bija, and then Hring and Shring, they represent three stages. The Aum or Atma Bija is the Apara stage or the individual, the empirical self. And then the Hring represents the union of Shiva and Shakti. It's known as Parapara, the stage of cause and effect. Cause is Para, transcendental. And effect is apara, that's experiential or phenomenal, phenomenological uh, experience. Whereas the cause is consciousness. The cause doesn't really do anything, but because of the existence of the cause, the effect comes into being automatically. In the last bija, shring, is the stage of para the supreme energy, the state of Parama Shiva. Right? There's all different forms of Shiva. 
But the original form is called Parama Shiva, the highest Shiva, where Shiva and Shakti are merged. They are one. I've shown before the form of Shiva and Shakti merged together. So this is the Parama Shiva. In this stage, she cannot be separated. She, she is not manifest as a separate entity. They are both together. So for attaining liberation, one has to merge into Parama Shiva. In other words, the individual soul, represented here by Aum or the Atma Bija, transcends Maya by means of Sadhana, which is the meaning of Hring, and then attains Shring, which is the merger with Parama Shiva. So in this state, Shiva and Shakti are not separate. Uh, like we talked about before, there's no duality between duality and non-duality. <laughs> so this is very important uh, because this is the goal of sadhana. Even though sadhana is part of duality, it's actually a fabrication uh, where one uses duality to transcend duality uses fabrication to transcend fabrication. This is represented by the bija ring. And then the goal of sadhana is to merge with the Supreme Self as represented by shring. And we discussed these bijas in detail in some of the previous videos. So in the second line of Mahashodashi Mantra, then the process of liberation is explicitly given. So that's about it for the second line. The third, fourth, and fifth lines, the next three lines, are the Panchadashi Mantra. They have 15 bijas, Panchadasha, 15. So Panchadashi Mantra will be explained in the next few videos. Huh? But I just want to point out that the very last line of the Shodashi Mantra is the same as the first line, but in reverse. Sao, Aing, Kling, Hring, Shring. And uh, this is known as, let me see, what's the Sanskrit here? Mantra Samputikarana. Mantra Samputikarana. So, this means the mantra is sealed. That the energy invoked by chanting the mantra does not go outside, but it remains inside, within. It's, this is a very internal mantra. It uses the internal energy, uh, the shakti, the kundalini. And when chanted properly, Kundalini will rise, open their heart, uh, you'll get all kinds of ecstasies, and then the energy will ascend to the top of the head, to the thousand petal lotus, and you get the liberation. That's about it for this one. Om Tatsat Buru Sarnai. <laughs>